Hey guys, this is Miko here. This is my second attempt at making an Ice Gauntlet video. Last time I messed up my recording settings, but this time we will hopefully have something better. So I did one of these a week ago for everything related to Blunderbuss. This one's going to be everything related to Ice Gauntlet. I'm not going to have like the super in-depth like tables and columns that I had for that one because Ice Gauntlet always uses a secondary weapon and it's like never uses a primary weapon anymore. And then at the end, I'll cover like how I could use this with Ice Spike, but Ice Spike is only viable in like one to two builds, and it's not, it's generally worse than any other Ice Gauntlet build. So, looking, going into like what you're looking for in terms of like armor perks, uh, so I have like a sheet here. Uh, there's like a NA build that's like popular, and then there's like an EU spec that's pop popular. Uh, I'd say that EU spec is generally better if you're go going to play this on point. And then the NA spec is generally better if you're going to play it, like, uh, in a normal group. But if you're on Deadly Point, you want to look to maximize Brazil Shirking, Shirking Fortification and Freedom. And then if you're on off a point or you're really good at living, then you're looking to basically maximize your, uh, what do you call it? Your refreshing. And then this one is 310, 200. Um, but yeah, with NA, the, the main goal that people in NA have had with this build is like to have 11 refreshing effectively, so then you can basically just go infinite with how many uh, ice walls you drop, and ice walls just carry in wars, because people walk into them, and then they get rendered, and then they get slowed, and they can't escape clumps, so overall that's very, very solid. Uh, e EU is more just about living, and then if you're alive, you can cast more abilities, so inherently you might cast more abilities if you're alive than if you're dead, even if you don't have the refreshing. Um, I'd say the EU build is generally, like, safer, and it's, like, easier to run. It's also incredibly more expensive. Like, everyone in EU runs Brazil Shrinking Fort Freedom, which means the price of those things is, like, astronomically higher. <laughs> uh, but NA, it's, like, the, the gear's a little bit cheaper to get, and then I think it's basically just as effective in every single aspect. Uh, like I alluded to earlier, Ice Gauntlet is used as like a secondary weapon to every single thing. So these are just like guides for IGBG because that's like the main weapon where Ice Gauntlet's like heavily used. Uh, IGBB plays something like similar. Uh, if you're running IGBB, these stats are different and then your weapon perks are a little bit different. But the, this is like for an IGBG. If I were to do like an IGBB one, uh, you probably want four to five times resil if you have four resil it's better if you're like on point if you have five resil it's like a little bit better if you're off point because decks actually take advantage of the the lower resil and great axes can take advantage of the lower resil but no other build really can and the damage that you take you take increased from great axes is sort of inconsequential it's like 10 percent. and if you're playing in point and you're on sacreds it doesn't matter that much it's not usually why you die so that's like the whole debate with that um so if you're playing igbb you generally want three times like uh, freedom the reason why three times or even two is like it for freedom is it gets you out of a lot of warhammer combos and then you usually want to fill this with uh put you have plagues grenades on armor or sorry on on weapon uh you'll you run it on armor if you're running the 150 con variant the reason why you put it on armor in that case is so that you can have more damage on your weapon and if you're if you're playing it that way then you need to have like a, a ideally a weapon with a uh, flame attunement enchanted and keenly empowered which is very hard to get so you usually end up with a two perker or a 2.5 which would be like two of those perks and then you get a weapon perk uh, if you hit your shots very very well then enchanted's a little bit better than keenly empowered if you hit, don't hit your shots as well keenly empowered is a little bit better than enchanted it's just a little bit of preference the only thing is if you're running enchanted or if you're running keenly empowered you want to make sure that you use your nades when you're keenly empowered procs which is a little hard to do but if you can do that, or if you just spam it because you have a lot of like refreshing ward or something like that, then it works very well. Um, but in terms of Ice Gauntlet on IGBB, it's like still like basically the same concept of, of like one of these builds. Uh, but if you're on IGBB, you're not. Uh, e yeah, it's like the same concept. So the, this NA and like the EU spec are basically the same. It's just uh, this like these perks change depending on like what variant of that you're playing. Usually with Ice Gauntlet, you're running Deadly Frost on weapon. If you're the exception to this is if you're playing a lighter medium IGBB, who's like tasked with protecting backline or harassing their healers, that's the one case where ending thaw is like actually beneficial to run. Uh, usually you don't need it because people will just AFK in your 
your Ice Storm and it does, the slow doesn't really change anything, but for the lighter builds it actually wastes more stamina and lets you get more kills, as well as like helps you land that brute for the lockdown into Azoth. So that's the, the whole idea with that. Uh, Ice Gauntlet, the main, the, there are a couple different like weapon trees. Uh, this is a standard one that's used right now. No one really uses Ultimate Chill anymore except for Ice Spike, because if you switch weapons off of Ice Gauntlet, then your Ultimate Chill no longer works. It also no longer works with your teammates. Meaning that if you want Ultimate Chill to work, you need to use an Ice Gauntlet ability and stay on your Ice Gauntlet. Even if you use an Ice Gauntlet ability and then you swap to your other weapon and swap back to Ice Gauntlet, the Ultimate Chill won't actually work anymore, which means Ultimate Chill is effectively useless, which is why people have moved on to a tree that has more of the basic perks, if that makes sense. Uh, some people I know like to take Energized Critical, uh, but it's usually like in combination with Ice Pylon. If you're gonna do an Ice Pylon tree, it looks something like this. Uh, it changes a little bit, but this is like usually what people run from what I understand. It's the the base thing, like one of the things that Ice Pylon takes advantage of. So Ice Pylon's like really really good at building ult. The other weird part about Ice Pylon is perks that are procking when you put the ice pylon down remain for the duration of the ice pylon. So what does that mean? Uh, if you proc keenly empowered and you put your ice pylon down and you do it while the keenly empowered is active, then your ice pylon will have 15% extra damage for the entire duration of the ice pylon. I don't know why that is, but it's been the thing. Uh, and that also works with energized critical, which is why some people front this. But you have to make sure your stamina is full when you put it down. Uh, it doesn't matter that much. It's like a, it's a min maxi thing. There are other weird things with Ice Pylon where it will proc weapon perks as long as you have the Ice Gauntlet out. So if you have a Dot Gem, then your Ice Pylon will proc that. Also your Pylon Burst, if it has a, that with the Aura, will proc the Dot. So then it's like super, super fast at building ults because of that, basically. Uh, and then also if you have something like Plague, uh, if you have like a keenly, if a keenly like affected uh, thing on your Ice ice Gauntlet, so if you have like uh, Keenly Jagged, you have Keen Speed, you have play crits any of those if you proc the keen because the ice pollen can crit then those perks will apply as long as you have your ice gone out there used to be a thing where you can just have the ice gone out for a little bit and then put it away and it worked for the entire duration i don't believe that's the case anymore but the damage seems to remain constant if you were to proc keenly empowered and put it down right away so that's like the the whole idea with that uh, if you're running ice pile on this is like generally better i've talked about in some other videos but it's it's good for healers it's also really good if you're on point uh, basically, if you don't have enough damage to actually take advantage of like Ice Storm and it doesn't really do a ton for you, then Ice Pylon is very solid. It's the fastest way to build Ult Charge in a game, especially if you take Pylon Burst. Uh, if you don't have Pylon Burst, it's still really, really good. Pylon Burst is better on point. It's like an AoE aura that goes around the Ice Pylon. I have a piece on me, I believe. Uh, I didn't put it on. Um, let me find it real quick. Uh, there we go. So, the one weird thing, so I like Maokai in my Ice Gauntlet almost all the time, and I'll go to in the weapon perks in a, a second here, but if you're for gems, you generally want a flat gem because it doesn't work on with Ice Storm if you're running an Ice Storm spec, but if you're running like a pylon spec, then you want a dot gem because the dot gem actually works with the pylon. Why can I... Okay, there we go. So if I put this down, you can see that like AOE and then how that can proc the, the dot. But if I put my Ice Gauntlet away, then, oh, does it still proc the dot? And I'm pretty sure it does not. Yeah, it doesn't. But you see how that like double hits? That's just like a way to build ults very, very fast because my ult gets two ticks per thing with the Ice Pawn and that will apply to anything in that AOE. So it's not hitting this dummy right now, but if it hit both, it would proc off of both. And you can also dodge and make it shoot faster. And like if you cancel the dodge, like right when the other one hits, it will shoot right away. So that's like a mid maxi thing. Um, but yeah, that's the whole idea with Ice Pylon. You also can play for Refreshing Frost with all your abilities, which is like a big thing about Ice Gauntlet. So that's like 20% CDR inherent built into it, which is why you see a lot of people do an Ice Shower first because the Ice Shower will land right next to the person and then they'll do that into an ability versus like doing uh, an ability and then trying to run into it and then drop your Ice Shower. So it generally makes sense to do something like this, because then that will reduce the cooldown of my actual ice shower itself. It didn't do it right there because I was like between the two storm things because I'm stupid, but that's what it does. 
and it also works inside your pylons like aoe frost thing even if you have the tiny mini one if you're inside the mini thing then it will work off of that as well but yeah that's the basic concept for that uh i had to wait for my pylon to die before i show the uh other spec for ice spike but can go into oh it died i can actually do that uh but ice spike is used in with fire stuff i don't think there's another weapon that really if can effectively use it right now because you have to have heavily scaled into int you used to be able to do it with igvg igvg can do it now it's just the other trees tend to be better because it lets them live more and there's not really a perk that you want to drop for ice spike but if you're running ice spike it tends to look something like i'm stupid i believe you do is something like this if i remember right uh, you don't take Refreshing Frost because it's like actually awkward to cast it when you have this because there's no thing to really stand in when you land your Ice Spike unless they're right on top of you with Ice Storm, so it's more niche. So that's why you run something like this. Uh, not really used for anything except for Fire Staff, so I'm just like going to kind of move on past that. But that's what you, you run if you want to run that build. Um, going into... Let's see, what I, what have I talked about? I talked about Perk Trees, I talked about uh, weapons. Oh, I need to talk about weapon perks. Okay. Uh, weapon perks are very weird. Uh, the Deadly Frost, you generally want on armor, and then you want the Refreshing Ice Gauntlet from the Dynasty Expedition is like, min-max for the Refreshing spec, because uh, you actually net more refreshing that way, of uh, generally. But, otherwise, if you don't have that, putting Deadly Frost and Ice Gauntlet's generally pretty good. Your next best perk tends to be, if you're on attack, it tends to be Ruinous. Uh, if you're on defense at that point, uh, it doesn't really matter a ton. Uh, Enchanted can be pretty good. Refreshing move tends to be very, very good as well. Uh, I think generally if you're like looking to get a good Ice Gauntlet and you don't want to do the whole refreshing setup, then do like a Deadly Frost refreshing move and then either slot in Ruinous or Enchanted. And that's best in slot. If you're running something off point, there's like the... The one that you can get from getting 200 Arcana, which is just best in slot that you can craft. So that's just generally worth even getting the 200 Arcana for, because it's a really good Ice Gauntlet and it's a lot cheaper than getting one on the post. Um, and you can even make money off Arcana while you're doing it if you're smart. Uh, but yeah, that's that Ice Gauntlet. I think that's like basically everything. Uh, if you're off a point, then Unending Thaw is like necessary. If you're on point, Unending Thaw is not necessary, because people will just sit in the Ice Storm anyways, and it doesn't really matter. They'll be slowed from like one of 20 other perks in the game anyway, so it doesn't really matter if they're like not slowed when they leave it, because they'll be slowed by something else and are probably already on slow cap. It's just funny how that works, but yeah, that's it's a bit of a shorter video, but that's basically everything that there is to do with Ice Gauntlet. It's used as a secondary weapon for almost every class uh, at this point. It's been used with bruises, been used with healers recently, it's been used with IGVG as a thing for a while, it's been used with IGBB. The main thing with Ice Gauntlet is you just have insane survivability if you have the pylon tree or if you have the, the normal tree, so it just makes it a really good default for a lot of different classes. But yeah, uh, let me know what you guys think. I'm trying to put out more of these videos for specific builds, but I want to do a, a guide on Ice Gauntlet, and I'm going to try to do a guide on greatsword because I've been messing around with that one a lot and I think I have a good opinion on that but the other weapons not as much so I'll be doing that and then I'll be doing some build guides like I want to do a, a VGSNS build guide I want to do a spear uh what do you call it a spear greatsword build guide and like maybe one or two others but yeah that's what I've, I've seen for the most part you can't really ever go wrong with running an ice got one in any spec but there are sometimes are better ones the main weakness of ice got one is it doesn't have a ton of like util for clumps but it's like really good util whenever there's a gate involved so opr it's insane wars in four it's insane uh, it's just there's at times where that rule can be broken and then you can get away with something else like catch it something it's like some people look to break that rule with I and mean, if you get the infected throw then it tends to that's this disease and weakened cloud it tends to be a little bit better than the util from ice gauntlet but it's like you have to have enough ice gauntlets in order for you to run something like that because you want the other team to not be able to walk through the door for free you want them to waste down getting through the door and the only weapon that can really do that consistently is ice gauntlet so yeah that's why that's played a bunch 
and I will see you guys in the next video.